On this slide here, um, we talk about the general flow or kind of a canonical or reference architecture of how people build a lot of services. What I show here is that you have customers on the internet, they're making a request of your service. The request comes into the data center where it hits a load balancer. The load balancer then takes the request and sends it to a stateless uh, web tier application. So this is typically some web app, maybe written in Node or ASP.NET, and it is stateless. That is, we're not storing any persistent state here. So now this stateless tier, it usually does things like authentication. Um, who's making this request? Do I know who they are? It might do um, SSL termination over here. It might um, look, um, validate any of the arguments that are coming in in the HEP request to make sure the arguments make all, a lot of sense. It might do throttling decisions here, um, things that we've talked about elsewhere in this course. Assuming the request is, all looks good, then the stateless web tier forwards the request on to a stateless compute tier. Uh, and of course, these tiers can all be scaled independently of one another, and they can be written in different technology stacks. This is provided to us by some of the benefits of microservices. In the stateless compute tier, um, here we're going to go and grab some state, and then we're going to do some processing based on the request that came in from the customer. So where is the state stored? Typically, the state is stored in some kind of stored service. This could be a SQL database or a NoSQL database. And I said there's literally hundreds to choose from here. Sometimes these stored services, they're implemented as multiple tiers themselves. And so there may be other internal tiers that you don't know about. It's part of their internal implementation. And there may be additional network ops. In fact, that's really what I want to focus on are these arrows. The arrows each represent a network hop. And the more network hops you have, the more uh, latency you've introduced into the processing pipeline, and the more time it's going to take for your client to get a response back. So we like to minimize these hops as much as possible. So what is a very common thing to do is for people to insert a cache mechanism on their stateless compute tier. So when the request comes into the stateless compute tier, it goes and talks to the stored service to retrieve some data. This would be the warm data tier. That warm data comes back over here, and then we store that information in a cache. So if the same client makes multiple requests into the service, the stateless compute tier can possibly read that information from cache instead of making these additional network hops to the stored service, thereby improving performance. Right? So we're temporarily storing the warm data in RAM, because it's hot data, that is reducing our latency and improving our performance. So this is a very common architecture. It is used by many, many websites out there or services out there. Uh, and hopefully now you see the benefits of doing that.